Matthew 19, verses 16 on to 22, from the authorized version of the Scriptures. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Good master, good master, huh? What good thing shall I do? Question. Any of you can answer this. Had Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? Hmm? No, no he hadn't. Just, just wanted to make you aware of that, okay? Just, just so you know. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Why? callest thou me good. Good Friday. There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Question! Had Christ Jesus, God the Father, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? Any of you can answer that. Hmm? So, that means the law was still binding, hence, keep the commandments. Okay? All right? We, we've discussed that, this at length during this Roman Catholic <coughs> Holy Week. Okay? Why callest thou me good? Good master. Good master, the rich young ruler said. Not the acknowledgement that he is the son of David. No, nothing like that. No, but good master. He didn't have eyes to see. He didn't have eyes to see. He was only concerned about himself, obviously. And not the fact that the king, the Mashiach, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, was standing right in front of him. See, he gave himself away in verse 16 where his heart was. Good master... And he's talking to God the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb, the Mashiach, okay? Good Master, what good thing shall I do that I may have, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. See, the Lord is saying to him, You're calling me good Master because you don't recognize, you don't know, you don't see but you ought to know. But you ought to know. You ought to know, Christian. But see, <laughs> everyone has ended. He didn't have the eyes to see, to realize, to recognize, and go, hey, wow, this is the Mashiach, the Anointed One. Jehovah saves. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God manifest in the flesh right there. He didn't have eyes to see that. So the Lord's like, you're calling me good. But I'm God. I'm the Father. See, he didn't have... And keep the commandments. Showing you that it was before the death, burial, or resurrection. Hence, the law was still binding. Okay? He saith unto him, which? Which ones? Which ones do I got to do to... To that I may have eternal life. Jesus saith, Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Bingo. Good Friday. You, you Catholics. You know, I try to be cordial with Catholics, but you guys are just crazy. 
You really are. Um, I, I, and I feel bad for uh, a lot of you Catholics who are brainwashed for uh, Satan's church, like some of these King James Bible-believing Christians are over the worship of the 25th Mass. I, I do. I, I really I pity a lot of you Catholics out there because of your willful ignorance. Okay? Because, hey, there's a service over here at St. John's tonight. That's a German Catholic, Catholic, you know, Lutherans. Okay? Uh, but the church building's got stuff going on. And, 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 and this, see, this whole thing is Catholic. This whole thing is Catholic. What must I do? What, uh, what good thing shall I do that I, that I may have eternal life? Hmm? And to the Catholic, there are the two important days. There's a start day, and the December twenty fifth mass. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and use your imagination. That's what I say to Rome. And his church and all her traditions. Verse 21. See, but what's interesting is the young man is like, I do all these things. He he knew, he should have known. He, this young ruler dude, should have known who he was talking to. But the Lord right away is like, Why call it me good? There's none good, but one, that's is God. It's like it's me, okay? But see, the guy didn't have eyes to see. But he kept all the commandments. So logic, you, you remember what that is. Logic tells you that this guy at least knew some of the scriptures in order to keep these things. But yet, with all the keeping that you people do, with all this palaver and all the glamour and the glitz, Something missing, isn't there? <laughs> it's not funny, but yeah, there's something missing, isn't it? Yeah, go figure. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, we'll touch on that in a second, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, they one thing you lack. See, that's what the Lord does. That's why you guys don't want to read the scriptures. That's why you guys want to replace um, what's lacking in you as a Christian with tradition, with sentiment, with emotionalism, with feeling with congregation. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Ah, so where was this guy's heart at? He had great possessions. He didn't want to get, he was sorrowful. Sorrowful, yeah. Look perfect in verse 21 there. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect. That's not a reference unto sinless perfection. Okay? Sinless, here's, here's a news flash for y'all. Um, no one except God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Word made flesh. Okay? Uh, no one was sinlessly perfect. Because you, you, you must remember when it comes to this thing about perfect, this reference, if thou wilt be perfect. He already kept the commandments. He said it in verse 20. But if thou wilt be perfect. Sinlessly perfect? <laughs> no. No. This will never enable man to go sinlessly perfect. Even us saints who have the Lord, the Father, Jesus Christ, God, the Holy Ghost, you know, God, okay, living within us, it's never at, it's never by gunpoint, it's never coerced. We have to make the right choices, and because of this 
sagging sin suit. Thank you, brother. Sinless perfection is impossible in this life. It is. The only one who was ever sinlessly perfect in flesh was the Word. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Remember, God became flesh. Flesh didn't become God unless you're a Roman Catholic or a cultic King James Bible-believing Christian. Anyway, 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 this thing about keeping the law perfect, it's not a reference on the sinless perfection. What is it? It's an issue of the heart. Yeah, but remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. Yeah. James chapter 2. Let, let's, you know, and then you get these guys like Mark the Messenger and, uh, uh, what's that guy? Uh, Ray Comfort and, um, oh, um, that deadly idiot who had a heart attack. Washer, Paul Washer, yeah, who come around and talk about, you know, about got to keep commandments and stuff like that. And, and, and Paul Washer is a little bit more subtle, uh, but they, you know, works salvation, okay? Works salvation, <laughs> those guys are. You know, Ray Comfort tells you you got to repent of your sin in order for the Lord to save you. Uh, you can't do that even at gunpoint. Okay? We'll talk about that in a minute. But, see, the perfect in Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, is not sinlessly perfect. It's the heart issue. Okay? James 2, verses 10 on to verse 13. And whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath shewed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Okay? What does that mean? Okay? Like I said, if you don't commit adultery and you kill... You've broken the whole thing, okay? Okay? Uh, if you covet, okay, you look at your neighbor's wife. If you put up an idol, like a, 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 a December 25th mask tree or something like that, or whatever it is, okay? All right? You don't do this, but you do this and see no one. And, that, and that's the point of the Ten Commandments which whoosh, goes right over these <laughs> atheists, <laughs> no such thing, uh, goes right over their heads. Okay? The Ten Commandments are perfect. And see, the atheist will look at that and it's like, okay. They will. They're just like, okay. And then when they try to see fallible man live up to that standard, which they themselves cannot as well, they, they mock Christianity for it. I mean, and this this is a big thing. You run into any atheist, they go to the, apocry the, the hypocrisy of Christians. Where do they always go to point out their hypocrisy of Christianity to the Ten Commandments? Every every single time, uh, Mr. Murphy did it. Uh, the, uh, a lot of people I've run into do, uh, do it. Uh, uh, what's her name? Stupid head. Oh, stupid head. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Mur uh, not Murphy. Uh, whatever her name was. Uh, the, the Lord had me do a... Uh, Christy. Uh, Christy Burke. Stupid head. Yeah, she did it. Uh, you know, they like to compare the Christian to the Ten Commandments. And see, they read the Ten Commandments and they instinctively know it's like, okay. Because thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. Have no other gods before me. Okay? But that's perfection. It's perfect. Yes, it is. But see, trying to keep that perfectly, not break any one of them, within a 24, within a 30-minute time period, okay? And I'm being generous. 
Uh, man instinctively knows that man cannot keep that unless you're a deluded Christian. Okay? All right. So, again, the thing about in Matthew 19, verse 21, if thou wilt be perfect, is not sinlessly perfect. It's an issue of the heart. And also, let's hit on this again on Acts, uh, Acts chapter 15, verses 6 on to verse 11. Brethren, brethren, saints, whenever you run into these guys who say you have to keep the law today, the Judaizers, okay, remind them of James 2, okay, which we just did, you know, the Ten Commandments are God's perfect requirements in order to be right with Him in a different dispensation. But, see, they were given to man to show you what was perfect and also to show you that you couldn't do it, hence you needed a Savior. Get it? Okay, that, 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 dude. If you can't, you know, put, quit rolling them, okay, and put them down and think for a little bit. Okay, if you can't get that, then you got to, you know, <laughs> get, you, get you a big old fat blunt thing, okay? <laughs> All right? It's an issue of the heart. And also, too, Acts 15, what am I doing in 7? Acts 15, verses 6 unto verse 11. And the apostles and elders, after the death, burial, and resurrection, okay, the blood shed on the cross, this dispensation, okay, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. What matter was that? That they had to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. Like Mark the Messenger. Like Great Comfort. Like, uh, oh, I just said his name too. That's, yeah, uh, Washer. And countless other people out there. It's like, you, well, you got to, you know, these, these stupid black Hebrew Israelites. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, remember, Jesus Christ was not a Hamite. He was not a Japhethite. He was Shemitic, a Hebrew. Okay? Alright? Just, just saying. Okay? And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts. Well, God knows my heart. Whenever you hear, ever you hear a Christian say that to you, no. And you atheists, you mark this as well. Go ahead. Especially when dealing with these Christians. Remember this. When you hear a Christian ever utter, God knows my heart, it's a means of justification and self-defense to defend something they know that they are doing is wrong to defend sin. Every single solitary time. I promise you. That's what they're doing. You hear a Christian, well, God knows my heart. Yes, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Okay? All right? It's a cop-out. It's an excuse to justify sin whenever you hear a Christian say, a saint... I, I've known saints, and unfortunately I've known a lot of Christians, okay, I have. But not one saint that I know, personally, not one, not one. And I know saints who have bad habits, not one ever, ever, and going on 16 years, has ever uttered, well, God knows my heart. You know why? Because, yeah, God knows our hearts. What is a perfect heart? We'll get to that. But let's continue. Okay? And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Unless you're a Calvinist, or unless you're a Pentecostal, charismatic whack job, who thinks you see <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Good luck. Okay? Now therefore... Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Notice it doesn't say specifically rule out Gentiles there. 
You notice that? Because, okay, look at that. All right. Look at verse 7. We see a distinction there of Gentiles. Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. Okay? God made choice among us that the Gentiles. Right there. Okay? And in verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Where there is neither Jew nor Greek, male or female, bond or free, barbarian or Scythian. Okay? We're all one in Christ Jesus. If you've gone, of course, the elect way of the cross, his, his way, not your own. You know, you boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. You're going up your own way. You're a thief and a robber. The Lord chose, elected the way of the cross. You got to go the way of the cross. You know, and that's why a lot of people of you hate Christ. Because you come to him, and you start to go down that road the way he wants you to, the way he has called all men, okay? You know what he's going to do? And, you, and you, you lost people know this, especially when it comes in context with the scripture. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He's going to put that his finger on that one thing, and you don't like that. It hurts, but that will be perfect. Here. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Keeping the law today as under the law before the death, burial, and resurrection is not a requirement for salvation. If I had a microphone, <clears throat> drop it. Okay? And see, the atheists will point out at Christianity and note the hypocrisy, which <laughs> Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. But they'll look at that, and then they'll judge Christianity by the Ten Commandments, which nobody can keep anyway. Uh, you know, and, and uh, as far as hypocrisy, unless you're unless you're Black Poolian, okay. You know, those perfect creature from the Brizraelites, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Psalm 51. What is, a, what is a perfect heart? What is a perfect heart? Psalm 51. The closest thing in all of Scripture. The closest. You could make an argument about uh, Daniel's prayer... You could, but mm, the closest you're ever going to get in Scripture to a sinner's prayer is Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verses 14 on to verse 17. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Deliver me from blood guiltness. And see, when you go to the Lord Jesus Christ the way he has elected, um, he's going to tell you that thing you lack. He is going to put his finger on that one thing. And see, doing that is supposed to chafe you. Why? Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken spirit and contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Contrite, you want a scriptural look at what contrite is? Look at the context. The sandwich, you know what we addressed in the last video? The sandwich, okay? Sandwich, contrite. Deliver me from blood guiltness. Stop. See, the sleazy believers 
whatever, they, they use the umbrella effect. We're all sinners. So that way, you go to Christianity, that way you can skirt your responsibilities as the one holding the nail and having the hammer. You can skirt your responsibility by, well, well we're all, hey! And like I said, with every single solitary, every single one of you, easy believers, free grace devils, every single one of you, sooner or later, when, when I get on your nerves, it always comes down to, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Still not broken of what? Self-righteousness. That's why, that's, why, that's why you people don't like the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. The way. Jesus Christ. He is the way. The truth and the life. That's why you guys don't like him. That's why you don't like the scriptures. Before the Lord could be any of a glory to you, you better know that you're guilty. And saints, rather in discussion, which we which we also have to watch out for, brethren. But but see, this is the that an example of that perfect heart that the saint has. We're gonna sin. We're gonna mess up. I got a pride problem. But see, salvifically, you need to know that you're guilty and that you're not good and that you can't save yourself. And hence, the law. You couldn't keep that even if you tried. You couldn't keep that if your children were tied up with C4 and the guy was saying, if you break one of them, I'm going to blow them to smithereen. You couldn't do it even if, you, even if that was at stake. You couldn't do it even if your bank account counted on it. Christian. Huh? It went away because you had much riches, huh? Yeah. Look guiltless. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Broken from what? Blood guiltness. Okay? You know you're guilty. A broken and contrite heart. You're taking responsibility. Deliver me from blood guiltness. I'm guilty. I can't save myself. I'm a, I ain't good. I can't do this. Lord. <laughs> Lord, please. <laughs> save me. And see, when you when you have a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, oh God, thou wilt not despise. And this is the Old Testament, by the way, just so you know. Okay? Remember too, um, the, the, the Lord hadn't died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scriptures, okay? Dad, you you got to get that through your thick head, okay? But, yeah, this is the Old Testament too. See, the perfect is the thing with a thought. Psalm 101. Psalm 101. Thank you. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart, a broken and contrite heart, one that fears the Lord. Because every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to God. Every one of us. Saints, we're going to do it at the judgment seat of Christ. You who do not make it to the judgment seat of Christ, not saved, your inevitable judgment will be at the great white throne. Good luck. So, perfect heart is a heart that belongs to God, truly, through brokenness, contrition, and fear. And fear. Oh yeah, don't, don't, don't pass over that fear thing. Therefore, knowing the terror of God, we people like to say, well, Paul never preached about the fear of the Lord. 
Uh, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, love one another in the fear of God. Uh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You are to fear God, because every one of us is going to get... You know, and you know, atheist, Mr. Murphy, you ain't watching, praise the Lord. Uh, <laughs> um, you're going to give an account of yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, whoever you are. Your belief on that is irrelevant. Can't say you weren't warned. That's going to make it worse for you. It would be had it would have been better for you to not have known than you to have known and say, yeah, yeah, I want sin. I like sin. I don't believe in the concept of sin. Oh, uh, well, you're stupid then. Okay, you you are. <laughs> Doesn't mean see your belief on that is irrelevant. You're going to give an account. Fear. You want to go before the Lord with blood on your hands? <laughs> yeah. Verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Ooh. Things you put before your eyes cleave to you like dung on the bottom of your foot. Huh? I'm, I'm going to be 50 years of age. And I can still remember movies I saw when I was a teenager. I can still, to this day, recite for you ACDC, Fear Factory, okay? I can remember, unfortunately, unfortunately, the images of the pornography I used to watch when I was a lost man. It cleaves to you. It cleaves to you. Like dung on the bottom of your shoe that gets in the groove. If forward heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. Relational, no, a wicked person. Okay? We know, have a head knowledge, but relational. Whoso privily, whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart, will not I suffer. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I don't believe in sin. Good for you. That good bravo, bravo. Like roll up a roll up another one there, buddy. Go right ahead. Yeah, that's that's irrelevant. <laughs> that that truly really is. It's like I say, you know, in the dictionary under redundant, it says to see redundant. Okay, that <laughs> okay. Whether or not you believe in that or not, that this is the standard at the great white throne that you are going to be judged by. Period. And your belief on that doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. Okay? But proud heart. Froward heart. Ye shall be as gods. Yeah. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Dispensational difference, but Jesus... Christ, he is the way, the perfect way. Now, we can't walk like Jesus did. He never, he never sinned. We can't do that. But we can have that type of sacrificial, charitable um, thing within us. Okay? Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He, sh he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. Deuteronomy chapter 7, I believe that is. <laughs> Deuteronomy 7, 25, wow, and 26. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver and the gold that is on them. You know, your Catholic church, your church here coming up this weekend. All the glamour and glitz, huh? Yeah. The, the show business hit. Uh, yeah. 
The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee. Lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. Television? Brad, you said yeah, and we use it for documentaries. Listening to our dear brother Alexander uh, read the scripture to us. Okay? <laughs> All right. That, yeah, that if we, you know, a brother makes a video or some uh, somebody sends us something, sometimes we'll watch it out there, but, you know, scriptures are going, Brother Alexander's voice is reading scripture. Okay? <laughs> Stuff like that. All right? But neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt abhor, utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Hmm. How many of you are watching Hollywood movies? Movies, stuff like that, that are clearly against Jesus Christ. Bringing the world into your... And hey, you, you know, you, you got one of these... A tablet or a hell phone? Here you go. It's right here. Okay? I got I got a tablet uh, and a hell phone, you know, and it's easy to do. It's easy to do to get the, you know, we've talked about that at length. Okay? All right. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Dwell in my house. What wicked things are you putting before your eyes? Psalm 139. Now see, because we are the Lord's, we, there's none good but God. And because God, who is good, dwells within the saint, okay, that means that we have to, what is the opposite of good? Bad. Hmm? What is, you know, it's bad, right? What's the opposite of love? Hate. Do you love the Lord? Oh, so many of you Christians, especially this week, especially, if this, you know, you have 365 days to shew the Lord's death till he comes. Why not? Why? Why around this? Now, scripturally speaking, scripturally speaking, scripturally speaking, nowhere, 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 are you commanded to be rem uh, to commemorate the Lord's birth? Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Are we uh, told to commemorate the Lord's birth? Not nowhere. And see, you December 25th mass worshipers don't like that. And you come up with all your little deflections and whatnot and hide behind truth to justify sin. Okay, you are nowhere, nowhere in Scripture are we commanded at all to commemorate the Lord's birth. And to equate that with a scriptural holy day is blasphemy. Okay? Okay? But scripturally now, listen to me. We are to shew the Lord's death till he come. We do that daily. We do that in communion. Self-examination. Okay? We have 365 days to be reminded to praise the Lord for what he has done that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures now Rome would know because that's Satan's church Rome is the one who did the actual crucifying yes, the Hebraic Jews uh, rejected their king yes, they did and yes, they did hand them over to, to uh, Pilate Okay, yes, they did. But no Hebrew held the nail and swung the hammer 
physically, literally. They, they just handed him over. So they were, of course, they're not without responsibility. But Rome crucified the Lord. That's the point. Rome crucified the Lord. Satan knows what the Lord looks like. Satan has walked in the midst of the stones of fire. Satan, Lucifer, uh, you know, that old serpent, the devil, the dragon, okay? Satan knows what the Lord looks like. Satan knows what his voice sounds like, okay? Satan knows what the Lord is. He knows who he is, okay? All right? So, I'm saying that because as far as this actual chronological date, um... Rome would know. Rome would know because they're the ones who crucified the Lord. They would know. They would know. They would know if it were truly, and I don't, I don't believe it. I don't know. But if anyone would actually know, you know, though of course the Lord, obviously that goes without saying. But think about this, okay? Rome is the ones that have killed the saints. Rome is the mystery Babylon who is drunken with the blood of the saints, not Israel. Okay? It's Rome. The Vatican, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church. Okay? They know the numbers. They know the exact number of the Holocaust. Okay? And you look at the Jesuit order, how fastidious they are in, ta in taking down information, recording people's conversations. <laughs> It's amazing that anyone talks to you, uh, <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah, that, that's that's Catholic stuff. They would know. They would know. Is it actually the March 29th, 30th? I doubt it. But see, the thing is, Rome is the one that is equating the Lord's death with this paganism. Yes, I am against Astarte. Because you have 365 days to shew the Lord's death till he come. And if you love the Lord truly, then, what am I doing in Zechariah? Then, um, Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Why, why did that? Did, did we already read that? No, we didn't. Psalm 139. Verses, uh, yeah. Verses, sorry about that, 21 under verse 24. If you love the Lord and you are saved, God is good. Then what's the opposite? Do not I hate them? Uh, let's read, um, uh, let me see, 19 under verse 24. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Yeah, Christian. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against me? I count them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Dave Murphy. I hate him with perfect hatred. Hey, at least he's up front. Okay, I give him that. At least he's up front, I know where he stands. But I hate him with perfect hatred. He hates my father. That hasn't changed. Oh, oh love your enemies, right? We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Okay? We'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. Alright? If you love the Lord, then you have to hate what is evil. Abhor that which is evil. We'll look at that, don't worry. Okay, you are to abhor that which is evil. Okay? If you love the good, then you have to hate the bad. Okay? And see, this Christian thing trying to wishy-washy, lukewarm, that makes the Lord sick. Love everybody. And see, the thing of unconditional love, which the atheist rightly pounce on the Christian when they preach that stupid John 3.16 gospel, Okay, John 3.16 in and of itself is not stupid. What Satan has done with it to try to make it applicable for salvation today is wicked. Okay? Atheists and lost people pounce on that. 
because it's not a logical thing for a God to love you unconditionally and just loves you and isn't mad at you, but yet is going to send you to hell if you don't believe on it. it it's, it's ludicrous to try to rationalize, rationalize that with a Christian, okay? And that's where the atheist usually succeeds over the Christian, okay? I love the Lord. I hate evil. I hate every false... I hate Rome. I hate Catholicism, okay? I hate free gracism. I hate Lutheranism, okay? I hate uh, Methodism or whatever you want to call it. Why? It's false. It's false. You know what I just mentioned? They worship one God in three persons. It's not the real God. It's not the real God. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, a lot of you are scared of that. Because you do have to be careful, and a lot of people have done this, and why we kind of look at that when it's like, you know, a saint hating something. Because why? Some people will try to justify their own personal vindictiveness and classify it under, well, it's perfect hatred. There, there are some brethren out there who I do not like at all. But, okay, if they were to come to me in need and I could help them, I would. Okay, that's the way that works. Okay? I don't seek to justify a personal thing under perfect hatred. Okay? As a stereotype or as a bigotry that some people have. Okay? No, you gotta watch if if it's against scripture rightly divided, it's wrong. It's bad. Okay? It's simple. If it's contrary to this, it ain't right. If it's contrary to this, rightly divided, of course, gotta rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, if it's against this, it's bad, it's wrong. And if it's contrary to this, I hate it. simple. I hate Rome. I hate Catholicism. I hate your holidays. I hate them all. I hate everything of Rome. I hate Roman Catholicism. Now you Catholics who are brainwashed by Catholicism, I do not hate you. Uh, I don't. I don't even despise you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, a lot of you Catholics do push the right button, I'll tell you that. But I hate Rome. And as a saint, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 5 on verse 9. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. 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 And he that believeth on him shall not be ashamed, uh, uh, shall not be confounded. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, 18 and 19. Uh, 18, yeah, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, hey, fledgling, moron, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, hey, moron, yeah, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay, the Word made flesh, God never sinned while in sinful flesh, hence his blood, precious, sinless, moron, kid, get it? Sorry there, brethren, that was for a certain individual. Okay, now well, back to 2 Peter, chapter 2, verses 5 on verse 9 again, verse 7 again. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Precious. 
uh, beyond price, uh, beyond rubies. You know, Scripture says that wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, is beyond ruby, rubies. Uh, the Lord is precious. There are no words really that my feeble little mind can equate to give thanks unto the Lord appropriately, except that which is written in the Psalms. Okay? But unto them that be disobedient, who like their sin, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the, made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, or offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. And I, I know I said to verse 9, but we'll stop at verse 8. Go ahead and read on your own time, okay? So, the Lord Jesus Christ is precious. Very precious to me. What about you? See, you, you Christians, you know what you're supposed to say. But ye shall know them by their fruits. From out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Yeah, I, I don't doubt for a moment that Rome actually knows the actual chronological date when they crucified the Lord. I, I, I don't have any doubt about it. Is it equated with this, with what we have going on right now? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. The uh, paganism thing, however, gives me to believe that it isn't. Okay? Because it's a start thing. Okay? Watch Easter Lenten eggs. You know, the Bibles, by the way, in Acts where it's interesting a little wabbit for you it's really interesting Easter Easter is a scriptural word but the Bibles that come from Rome and yes Rome gives you the Bible God gives you the scripture and I hear a public repentance public repentance yeah I was wrong. America is a Christian nation, isn't it? Think about it. Yeah. Even though the, the, our Constitution was made by Masons, Freemasons, okay, uh, who bow at every altar. Um, yeah, America, America is a Christian nation there. And, yeah, isn't that, isn't that something? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go, go, bravo, bravo, you're right. America is a Christian nation. Look at that, Christian nation of America. <laughs> oh, by the way, you, you know I'm, I'm not Christian, right? And Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. So, but because the Lord is precious unto us, Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. And there is none good by who? Abhor. Abhor is an extreme form of hatred. To abhor something is a lot more than just simply hating. It's like when you say, I don't hate you, I despise you, uh, that's more than hatred. He's spitting in your face, brother, and you're having fellowship with that guy. Okay, whatever, dude. Whatever. Whatever. All right. Romans 12, verse 17, on to the close now. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. With the bread of life that comes from the scriptures. 
If he thirsts, give him drink. The sincere milk of the word, washed in the water of the word. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Don't say you weren't warned. Don't say you weren't warned. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And there is none good by who? By who? And see, they go to Matthew chapter 5. Question! Seriously. Question. Matthew chapter 5. Come on, Christian. You ought to get this. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Did, was, did Christ die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. No, he didn't. What does that mean? It's still the Old Testament while he was alive at first. Still, the law was still binding. The, the debt for sin had yet to be paid. Okay? You gotta rightly divide the word of truth. Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Doctrinally not for us today. Instruction in righteousness, yes. Doctrine, absolutely not. Where's where's faith in it's finished? Guess what? When he spake the Sermon on the Mount, it wasn't. You guys gotta rightly divide the word of truth and get your head out of Rome's butt. Putting it bluntly to you. Matthew 5, verses 44 and verse 46. But I say unto you, love your enemies by not telling them the truth, huh? by being okay with sin, by knowing a wicked person, by letting uh, that which is vile into your house. That's what Christianity... And see, the atheist pounce on that. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. What's going on here? <laughs> What's going on here? But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the... And that's an S-U-N. To rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if, if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even publicans the same? You know, putting coals of hot fire on their head by giving them truth. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. How do, you, how do we love our enemies? Feed him. Or her. Feed them. Give them drink. Okay? That's how. But Christianity takes evil into herself and calls that love. Christianity sees somebody running headlong off a cliff and cheers them on instead of being the one to trip them up. It's like, whoa, stop, hold up, time out. You're going, you're going, no. They call that hate. It's opposite. Christianity, what you guys know as Christianity, is hate, not love. And see, too, during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Okay? Look, people, you, 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 you need to understand this. You don't need faith when you can see the Lord. Okay? Read Hebrews 11. You look that up. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Okay? Look it up. The Lord's going to be on the throne. Okay? Faith is not needed during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Which this is written for. And, okay, it'll be all works. Besides, there will be whoever your enemies are, they are going to have to personally answer to the Lord physically during the kingdom of heaven. That's why he's saying that. Okay? For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? 
And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publican so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Again, Father in heaven is perfect, sinless. Yes. Does that mean to be sinlessly perfect during the kingdom of heaven? That won't, because, I mean, read the, read the Sermon on the Mount. No. God is perfect and sinless. We are to have a perfect heart for the Lord. Love our enemies by giving them truth, demonstrating to them truth. That's how we do it today. During the kingdom of heaven, okay? <laughs> During the kingdom of heaven, your enemy, okay? He's rapido! <laughs> Gonna have to give an account to the Lord right there on the throne! Okay? It's a different dynamic there. All right? So, and see, how do we love our enemies? Luke chapter 13, verse 1 and verse 5. Luke chapter 13. And see, we are all ambassadors for Christ. Every single one of us saints, male and female, okay? We are in the ministry of reconciliation. Every single one of us. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation, okay? We are. We are. All right? But... Luke chapter 13. How do we love our enemies? Hmm? How do we pour our coals of fire on their head? Therefore, Luke 13, verses 1 and verse 5. Therefore, there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay. That means no. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. You couldn't repent of your sins of, if you tried. The repenting that you are doing is turning from yourself, calling yourself your own God. Like Mr. Dave Murphy. Okay? He is an example of that. He is his own God. He calls himself an atheist. Dude, you're not an atheist. You are your own God. Okay? You're, 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 every single one of you so-called atheists, you're your own God. It, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay? You're not an atheist. They don't exist. Okay? They don't. The, that's what you're repenting of. Okay? That you are your own God. That you're good. That you can do something. Okay? You need to be broken. All right? Christianity gets close to that with the umbrella effect where you can hide under there, skirt your responsibility. Or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Psalm 53, Psalm 53, verses 1 on the verse 3, Psalm 53, verses 1 on the verse 3. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's what a fool is. There, they say there is no God, capital G. But you know what's there? The little G God themselves. Dave Murphy is a fool, but he's his own God. Uh, Aaron Ra, that, that guy, that guy. Have you ever heard of that guy? Aaron Ra, okay, long-haired guy, looks like Gene Hoagland, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, he says in his heart there is no God. Uh, he is his own God, okay. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Yeah. Because what's good? God. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No. Not one. No one's good. That's what my mother could never get over, man. That's what, that's what hung my... Because my mother heard the true gospel. And she couldn't get over that. There is none good. 
you, you read about that in the beloved Romans chapter 3, 10 on to verse 18, which the free gracer uh, purposely avoid because they want the umbrella effect to hide under that. It's like, hey, we're all, instead of taking personal accountability because they are their own gods, because they save themselves by their own belief. Guys, a bunch of devils, man. All right? And, see, there's none good. What's the problem with the, what's the problem? What's the problem with these people? Isaiah 14, 13 and 14. Okay? Isaiah 14, 13 and 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will extend above, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Good Friday. You have 365 days. I, every day, am grateful. Praise the Lord that He died. For who? Sinner was chief. But see, you Christians in your building, your little phallus houses this weekend, your Good Friday. You have 365 days. Why are you relegating it to this pagan thing? Why? And like I said, Rome would know. I do believe that. I do believe that. I do believe Rome actually knows the actual chronological date that they crucified Jesus. I, I do believe that. I do. I do. I do. Okay? Is it March here? I, I had a lot of trouble swallowing that knowing Satan's church, okay? I have a lot of trouble swallowing that, you know. But hey, hey, you know, there, there was somebody called Jesus. <laughs> there was somebody called Peter. There was somebody called Paul. There was a woman named Mary. Yes, yes. Hey, I got that right. <laughs> Rome's got all these things wrong, you Trinitarians. But they got who God is, one God and three persons, right? You Trinitarians need to be pull a Mr. Murphy and roll yourself up one. Real big fat one. Yeah. 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 See, the reality is, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And here's the here's the painful thing that so many people don't like to uh, face. So they boot the door and climb up some other way. First Timothy chapter one, verses twelve on to verse seventeen. One of my favorite verses in all of Scripture is in this portion. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. Some he has called to different positions. Okay? I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, thank you. Who was before a blasphemer, persecuted and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 15. And this is what Christianity skirts. Well, we're all sinners. Personal accountability. That's why the fake gracer hates Romans 3, 10 and 18. Because the, the, the one thing you lack 
See, Catholicism tells you that it's mandatory for the Catholic, it's in their catechism, that twice in the year at least, you know, the scriptures, it was three times in the year that the males were supposed to appear before the Lord. Okay? But that different dispensation, not relative or uh, not for us today, um, salvifically. But to the Catholic, there are the two days that you have to keep as Catholic. Starte and the December 25th Mass. The two biggest days to Rome. Okay? And I do really personally believe that these two holy days, holidays, there you go, brother, excuse me, these two holidays of Rome, because a holy day is given scripture. Holiday, that's what man makes. Yeah. And it says, in respect of a holy day. Okay? But, he said to one of the, this is one of the two bigger days to, to Rome. And scripturally, you know, they say it's equating, they're equating it onto the death, burial, and resurrection that they're praising them for that Good Friday. But when you look into the whole thing of Astarte, which will be in the description box for you, okay, um, it's Rome has taken something that you and I ought to do daily. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord every day. Why? This is a faithful saying and worthy of all ex acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. And that's what you all hate. Oh, that I am chief. I am chief. The, the one thing that I started to say and then went off on this, um, among saints, it's not, you know, well, I'm not as bad as so. It's like, no, I'm worse than you are. No, Brad, I, I, I'm worse than you. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's that. You know, and we got to watch it with that. We do, brethren. But see, that's the perfect heart with the Lord. Okay? Sinner who, I, who is chief. No, I'm not better than them. I'm worse than that guy. That's brokenness. Knowing that you're hopeless. But hey, just believe and receive. Go to church. Go for a good Friday. And your Easter. Uh, you know, how they go from a cross to a egg. Oh, gee, I wonder. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might chew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the king king eternal immortal visible the only only wise God not not the one in the middle okay three persons I'm gonna touch on that be honor and glory forever and ever amen German Catholics, Lutherans, or Trinitarians. Uh, Methodists are generally t uh, Trinitarians. Episcopalians uh, are Trinitarians. Uh, Presbyterians are Trinitarians. Okay? Uh, a lot of Baptists are Trinitarians. Okay? Pentecostals are not, but they're, they're modalists, usually. At least they got the right idea. At least they got the right idea. They're off on a lot of other things, but at least they got it with God. Okay? Alright, that doesn't make it good. Pentecostalism is disgusting heresy. Okay, disgusting. Disgusting heresy. Okay? John 12. John 12. Then we're going to have a rabbit trail because I gave my word and I'm going to answer this question. Okay? John 12. Verses... 23 on to verse 36. Then we're going to have a little rabbit trail. We're going to shift. And Jesus answered, answered them saying, The hour has come 
that the Son of Man, we're going to touch on this in this video, should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. <laughs> you got to die in order to be born again. You have to be broken before you can be fixed. Okay? Broken, contrite, and fear. Brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. Those are three requirements to salvation. And that's, you get all that going the elect way of the cross. Which is death. Was, okay? Death. Which Christianity doesn't like. They like to avoid that. God loves you. Shut up. Shut up. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth it, hateth his life in this world, shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Yes, because Jesus Christ is the Father. Now is my soul trouble. Soul. God has a soul. God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. The soul is God the Father. The Word made flesh is the body, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? That's, that's the three aspects of God. Okay? The three components, as it were. Okay? Now is my soul troubled. What say I, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Pay attention. Father, glorify thy name. Jesus Christ is the Father. But he's like, Father, glorify thy name. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. How does this work? You can say, well, great is the mystery of God in this. Let's keep going. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So we have Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God the Father. God manifest in flesh. But yet, God the Father speaking to the Lord from heaven. So others could hear. Hmm. See, when you have, dear friend, a covert Trinitarian outlook. Oh, Master, we know that thou teachest rightly. <laughs> but see, when you have a Trinitarian outlook, you equate it in a person, right? So, how does the way you Trinitarians rationalize this and think this way? It's like, okay, the God of everything relegated to just the body of a man, just the body of a man, but yet the Father never left heaven. See, here's the thing. God's a lot bigger than you're giving him credit for. That's the problem. See, when you get this Trinitarian mindset, you put God here, here, and here. One, two, three. Heresy. So when at first, and we got to have grace with this, brethren, at first, when you come along and show them, oh, whoa, 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 Trinitarian, Trinity is heresy. They still look at it. It's like, okay, how could then God the Father leave heaven all of a sudden and not be in heaven but yet? God's a little bit bigger than you're giving him credit for. Okay? Let's, let's continue. Verse 29. The people, generally, the people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Verses 28 and 29, I believe, are very significant for us as concerning the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, we, the saints, and here's another thing, okay, here's another thing, we're saints, we have the Father living within us, 
How is the Father living in me and living in my wife in the living room? How is the Father living in me and living with my, in my brother in New Jersey? Brother in Georgia. Dear brother in North Dakota, please keep him in your prayers. Our brother from Ohio. Huh? Our brother from Croatia. Our brother from Norway. Our sisters from England and from um, Ca uh, Carolina. And, the, and from Woodstock. Okay? And of course, dear brother from Missouri. How is the Father dwelling in all his people? Does that mean there's a up number, a utmost number of fathers around? No, 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 no. See, God is a little bit bigger than Trinitarianism lets you believe. Okay? And that's the thing. That's the thing. It's brokenness, contrition, and fear. Fear of the Lord. Which Christianity doesn't have. But I believe this is how it's going to be a type like this for the redemption of the purchase possession. Us saints, we're all going to hear, come here! Just like that. All of us saints. And then we're out of here. I believe that others are going to hear it, but it's going to be a thunder while we hear an angel, the angel of the Lord, come here! Speak unto us. That's what I believe. That's what I believe, uh, what the redemption, we're going to be like all of a sudden, you know, in the twinkling of the night, come on, brother, whoa! And the people out there are going to hear something, and I believe this is where we can prove this, uh, they're going to hear something, but they didn't hear, you know, come up hither, they heard something else, okay? Okay? Very significant. Very, very significant, okay? And a silent... Redemption of the purchase possession. I, uh, I, I toyed with that for a little while. I really did. Because, hey, remember when the psychological uh, manipula uh, psychological military operation known as the Poison Crown was going on and everyone was locked in their houses, apparently? Uh, a lot of people were like, well, the redemption could be silent. No one would know. No, no. Everything, the whole world changes with that event in a twinkling of the eye in a twinkling of an eye quicker than a snap a blink the world changes everything changes with a blink S Satan is not going to be able to cover that up so this idea that it's going to be a silent redemption um, you know catching away the body of Christ I, I that there's no way I did toy around with the notion of that. Kind of made a little sense. Sounded good, didn't it? But it's like, no, no, no. Satan is not going to be able to hide that. <laughs> so, let's continue. And besides, the Lord doesn't want it hit. Okay, once we're out of here, everything changes. Salvation changes. It goes back to faith and works. Okay. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And, uh, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And what are we reading to? Uh, verse 36. Now draw all, he is the way, the truth and the life, the elected way. Does that mean that everybody's going to be saved? No. No. Because, see, Christians... Again, with God loves you unconditionally, that's a kind of coercion. God does not love you. Okay? God's love is there for you at the cross. And if I be lifted up, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, crucified, will draw all men onto me. He is the way. He is the only way. The elect way of the cross. That does not mean that everyone's saved. No. No. Again, example, Dave Murphy. He doesn't want to be saved. You're going to try to, you're going to, try to tell him that he's saved and he doesn't know it? No, be careful. He might curse at you. He does that great. No, no. No, this does not mean that everybody's going to be is saved and they don't know it. Or everybody's going to... No. 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 
You have to, it's our faith. You have to make the right choice. You have to go down that way of the cross. Okay? He saves us. But he doesn't force you to go down that path. You're not coerced. God is not a God of coercion. It's really interesting, too, because Calvinism teaches a God of coercion with elect and non-elect. Okay, like the Dudley Do-Right devil is. Okay, Christianity, in a, whole, in a general sense, is also teaches a coercive God who loves you unconditionally even though you reject his son. God loved and gave. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about that? This, he said, signifying what death he should die. People answered him, We have heard on the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man, Son of Man, must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, While yet a little while is the light with you, walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be children of the light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Now, I was asked, <laughs> I was asked about Revelation chapter 5, verses 5 on to verse 7. And I'm going to actually link this video onto the comment of the individual who, uh, who asked this. Individual in a comment asked this, and I gave my word, so I'm answering it today. This is answered in its totality uh, in the video, Who Was on the Cross, uh, where we get into this deeply, this topic alone. We're touching on it today. We get into it deeply, Who Was on the Cross. How can God the Father be in heaven and be on the cross? How can God the Father be in heaven and yet, you, you say Jesus is the Father. He is the Father. How can he be in the Garden of Gethsemane? Revelation chapter 5, verses 5 on to verse 7. God's bigger than you're giving him credit for. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, Son of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven, ooh, 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 seven spirits of God. Seven, thank you, brother. Seven, seven spirits. That will be, beg your pardon, I'm writing this down. Seven spirits. Okay. Seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Hmm. Sat upon the throne. So I was asked, you know, I was like, oh, I believe in the Trinity, brother. Okay. But I gave you my word that I'd answer your question. The answer, uh, the question has been answered, like I said, <laughs> exhaustively, in the video, uh, who was on the cross? But, 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 God is bigger than a lot of you give Him credit for. Jeremiah 23. This is a simplified thing of it. You want the meat of it? Watch that video. Okay? Jeremiah 23, 23 and 24. Jeremiah 23, 23 and 24. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord? And not a God far off. My God right there in front of you. And not a far off. How could he be on the throne and be the lamb? Look at that, look at that verse. Man, look at that. Am I a God at hand? Am I, am I a God that's just relegated here? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He is God the Father. But yet God the Father is in heaven. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? God's, God's a little bit bigger. And see, and that's the thing. Christianity, 
dwarfs God into three persons. Atheists dwarf God to a little idea, and they're up here. Sleazy believers do the same thing. Okay? Make little the God of the Scriptures. The Father. The Lord. You, you make little God who created you. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I fill, look at that, heaven and earth, saith the Lord. God's a lot bigger than you think. Than I think. Than I think. Oh, and also, too, a reference to the Lamb in Revelation chapter 5 there. Uh, always remember, always remember Genesis 22, verse 8. Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Himself. Himself. Am I a God at hand? Saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? See, and that's the thing. Y'all think it's like, okay, because we say Jesus is the Father, that's like, okay, God left heaven and he's just there. And no. No. God's bigger than anything. Anyone. Okay? God the Father could be on earth and in heaven. Yes. Okay? All right? Uh, Psalm 139 again. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Okay? The, the magnitude, the scope, the, the literal mass, size of God, we, we can't comprehend. But what we're given in Scripture is to tell us that He's a little bit bigger than we give Him credit for. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, 700, verse 16. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Look at that. Lowercase s. Something that he imparts. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? There, there ain't any way that you're going to go where God isn't there. Even in the most, like, okay, some of you guys think about, okay, well, what about a porn shop like in San Francisco? Uh, God's everywhere. He really is. He really is. He really is. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. This doesn't mean that he went to hell to pay for your sins. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy right hand, excuse me, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Right hand, authority, equated, the right hand of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? God manifests in the flesh. We're going to touch on that in a second, okay? Okay, let's continue. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. And what are we reading to? Verse 16. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in the sea in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Uh, three books. Three books. My personal favorite video that the Lord ever had me to do. Why, I don't know. Okay? John 4. John 4. John 4. 
verses 52 on to verse 59. Huh? Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> what what did I write there? <laughs> John <laughs> chapter 4. What did I write there? Uh, okay. John 4, 21 on to verse 26. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this work in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye know, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. And uh, what is a Jew? The Hebraic Jews? Okay, this is why Satan has twisted what a Jew is. But scripturally, Jews are Hebrews. Okay? Yes, there is that one thing in Esther. Yes, but the whole is a little bit greater than the few. Okay? But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a, capital S, spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God's a little bit bigger than you're giving them credit for, man. Most Trinitarians, when you first present them with this, um, they're, they're, they're not going to get it. They're not. I mean, unless they, if they really want to know and they bite on something like this, it's like, okay, let's go. But usually, like I said, the minute around a Trinitarian, you just like, oh, Jesus is the Father. They're like, Ch -ch -ch, you know, this intense reaction, hatred over, you know, the Marian kind of... Uh, 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 Trinitarian thing. The Trinity is a perverse thing there. Okay, I'm writing down that perverse. The Trinity is perverse, by the way. Very perverse. If you're a Trinitarian and you're in disguise, you, you, you're, uh, anyway. But we got to be grace, gracious unto the Trinitarian. We do. But if you're aware of the arguments and then still trying to cause trouble, that's a different story. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, anointed one. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. I that speak unto thee am he. I am. I am is in that verse right there. Jesus did not say, I am the Messiah. You're right. He didn't have to. He said, I am he. I that speak unto thee am he. He's like, I am the Messiah. Even though he did not say, I am the Messiah. Like I say, they're right. Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. He never did. He said, I am. That's all you needed to say. Now, son of David. Son of David. You, we hear the Lord referred to as son of David, son of man, son of God. Okay? Son of David. Ezekiel chapter 37. When the Hebraic Jewish people referred to him as the son of David. Okay? We talked about this in another video. Alright? It's a reference unto him as king of the Jews. Ezekiel 37, 20 on verse 24. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them all into their own land, bringing them back into Israel, okay? And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them. And they shall be no more, na no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms uh, any, uh, any more at all. Neither shall, they, neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, 
wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. Israel is the apple of God's eye. They have already been brought back to Israel, but the rest of this has yet to happen. Okay? The rest of this has yet to happen. Verse 24. And David my servant shall be king over them. Question. Is Ezekiel making a reference to actual literal King David? Of course not. That, that's a stupid question, but you never know with these Christians and atheists. Uh, verse 22 proves that there's no way that he is actually making a reference onto King David himself, but the son of David, meaning the successor of his kingship, King of the Jews. Verse 22, And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. After the death of Solomon, with Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who led Israel into sin, the kingdom split into two kingdoms. Okay? After the death of Solomon. It was one kingdom under David, one kingdom under Solomon. After that, they were divided, north and south. Okay? So the one kingdom uh, going back and David my servant shall be king over them is not a reference of, it couldn't be. Who is it talking about? The Lord Jesus Christ. Son of David, have mercy on me. We, we had a video on that. You know, thou, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. That's addressing his kingship. When a Jew referred to him as son of, the, uh, son of David, the blind guy, he stopped. The rich young ruler who should have known, good master. Son of David is reference unto his kingship. Not literal seed. Okay? And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall all walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Question, is that happening today? No. No, it isn't. This is yet to come. And uh, Jesus, you know, Mary was also had the lineage of David. But Joseph was not the father of David. Okay? So son of David, uh, John 18, John 18, John 18, John 18, okay? Son of, uh, Son of David, when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, is a reference onto his kingship. John 18, 33 and 37. Then Pilate answered, uh, entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, uh, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from thence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou the king of the king? Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that heareth my everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Where are we reading to? Uh, here. Right there, verse 37. King. So son of David, when you see a reference to Jesus as son of David, it's a reference unto his kingship. And uh, of course, man. Man, what do they do? John 19, 14, and 15. And it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the sixth hour. And the sixth, and, the, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. And it's interesting. I think I began to say this, but didn't finish it. Easter is a scriptural word. Easter, Astarte, is a pagan holiday. And the Bibles that come from Rome try to tell you that it's Passover. 
But when you look at that text, the Passover sacrifice already happened. It was the days of unleavened bread. So it wasn't Passover. Okay? It wasn't. The Passover sacrifice had already happened. Okay? Then the days of unleavened bread. Okay? So Easter is a reference onto the pagan holiday, which is in the scriptures. But yet, the Bibles that come from Rome take it out and try to say it's Passover. Go figure that out. Okay? Go figure that out. Son of Man. Another one. Jesus is the Son of Man. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Son of Man. Romans chapter 8. And this, and this is why with confidence and assurance of the scriptures, when you get one of these King James Bible William Christians who come at you, when you tell them the truth that the flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful, but Jesus himself never sinned. Hence, okay, little twit, moron. Hence, because he never sinned, that sinful flesh was sanctified by God keeping the law. Okay, that's how that works. But, Romans 8, verses 1 and verse 4. And judge not will be in there in the description box for any of you idiots who want to jump on that bandwagon again. Okay, go ahead. And just keep reposting the same video over and over and over again, refuting your nonsense. Okay? All right? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Flesh did not become God. God became flesh. Okay? God manifest in flesh. Flesh did not become God, you devils. Okay? Get that through your head. Do you some good. There is uh, Romans 8, verses 1 on verse 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, and that's capital S, in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 5. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 5. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Son of man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? John chapter 1. Just one verse. John chapter 1. This is, this is very simple stuff. Very simple stuff. John chapter 1, verse 14. <laughs> they don't want to get it because they love, they love their sin. They love flesh. Christians. Okay. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the Word was Jesus Christ. And we beheld His glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Only begotten of the Father, Son of God. Son of God. Son of God. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 5 on to verse 7. For every battle of the warrior is, conf is with confused noise. And garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel, f fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder, the son of David. A child is born. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? <clears throat> and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called capital W, Wonderful, capital C, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay? And now John chapter 8. John chapter 8. 23 and 24. John chapter 8. 23 and 24. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, Christian. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins, God the Father. The everlasting Father. Okay? And, 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 and verses 52 and verse 59 now. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Who makest thou thyself? These are the same dudes who I believe <laughs> in verse 30 as he spake these words many believed on him. Thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. <laughs> okay? These are the same people. We believed on him. And who makest thou thyself? One God and three persons? Ah, no, no, no. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not, the, yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then the Jews, then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus never said he was God. You're right. He didn't have to. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Unless you believe I am he, the Father, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But how can he be? Uh, doesn't he fill heaven and earth? Where are you going to go to get away from God? God is a spirit. God the Father. God the Father is in me. Your saint God's, God the Father's in you. What, are there uh, like a hundred God the Father? No. God's a little bit bigger than you, you're giving him credit for. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. How the Jews know what he said? Trinity? Absolutely not. Trinity is satanic called himself the Father by saying I am. You know where that comes from, Christian? Hmm? You know where that comes from? Exodus 3. See, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, was equating himself exactly Exodus 3 verses 13 on to verse 14. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say, say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? 
God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Jesus called himself the Father. People. And uh, John 14, we'll go through it again. John 14, 6 on to verse 9. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and, show, and it sufficeth, sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? 1 Timothy chapter 3.16 1 Timothy chapter 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the capital S spirit, seen of angels, preached on to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. See, we have 365 days to shoot the Lord's death till he comes. Okay? Like I said, I do believe that Rome does have the actual chronological date. I do believe that. I, I really do. I think they... If anyone would know! Okay? All right? But now go, go to Matthew chapter 26. Okay, now we're shifting back. Okay? I was going to make two videos, but you know what? I don't want to make two videos. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the time allots and the kind of works are great. Okay? Besides, the Lord, you know, we, we, I'm doing a second video anyway. So, <laughs> anyway, Matthew 26, 26 on to 28. Okay? All right. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And, okay, Catholic, shut up. Okay, he is not talking about going and, t you know, the mass nonsense, okay? Here's your problem, Catholic. Here's your problem. I'm going to quote your boy. Quote from Ignatius de Loyola. Here's your problem, Catholic. Putting quotes from Ignatius de Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit order. The Jesuit order controls Catholicism. Today, Catholicism is Jesuitism. Pope Francis is a Jesuit subservient unto Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order. Arturo Sosa is the most powerful man on earth. Okay, he controls nations. Okay, here's a quote. Putting aside all private judgment, we should always be ready to accept this principle. I will believe that the white I see is black if the hierarchical church so defines it. That's your problem, Catholic. You are taught this precept, which is of the Jesuit order, from Ignatius de Loyola himself. Putting aside all private judgment, you have no mind of your own. You're told what to think. We should always be ready to accept this principle. I will believe that the white I see is black if the hierarchical church so defines it. So Rome tells you that the Mass is salvific, and that the cookie and the wine actually become blood and flesh. That's heresy. That's nonsense. But that precept of the Jesuits is taught 
Catholicism today. Church tells you to jump, you're going to say, how high? The church says, got to do this, you're going to do it. Slaves. You are slaves. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9. New Testament. Okay? Hey, Tom! <laughs> idiot. Praise you ain't. You stupid idiot. I have no respect for that guy. Making merchandise out of people. Uh, when did the New Testament begin? This is my blood of the New Testament. Okay? When did the New Testament begin? Hebrews 9, 15 on verse 18. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the First Testament was dedicated without blood. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? See, we have God the Father dwelling within us. Okay? And his death brought in the New Testament. Alright? Alright? And since we have God the Father living in us, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead, die, death. Good Friday. We are to die to ourselves daily. You have 365 days a year to shoot the Lord's death till he come. Why are you doing it only around this? Why the big to-do around this paganism? A start day. Hmm? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Again, every single time God says this, it's not talking about salvation. Not talking about salvation. If you come to him the way of the cross, he saves you. You are once saved, always saved, sealed into the day of redemption, eternally secure in this dispensation. You can lose a lot of other things. You can't lose what isn't yours. Okay? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Why? Because we are part of him. Okay, we are of his bones and of his flesh. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 31 on to verse 34. See, we have to die to ourselves daily. Death. Death. Die daily. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 31 on to verse 34. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. <laughs> Some literally. Okay? We are to die to ourselves daily. How do you do that? Satan, watch this. Let me show you the world in a moment of time as you flip up and flip up and it's like, oh, wow! Well. Let me, let, me, uh, let me show you the world in a moment of time. Looking for a certain documentary. This happened the other day. Uh, looking for a certain documentary on uh, YouTube. And we were looking at it. And we, kept, and we kept getting distracted by the other videos. And we're like, oh, what is that? Oh, what is that? It's like, what? wait, 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 wait. We're looking for something specific. And here he is. Okay? All right? Die to ourselves daily. Die to the world. Die to ourself that we are good, that we are our own gods. But yeah, all things are lawful for us. You're right. Can't dispute that, won't dispute that. But see, you've got to make the right decisions. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Wake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. 
I speak this to your shame. See, Paul talked about sinless perfection. Okay, okay, genius. Explain to me Romans 7. That's before he was saved. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Sinless perfection. Even, even sleazy believers can dismantle you guys really easy. That's, that's sad. Because sleazy believers are devils. But they can dismantle the, uh, the um, uh, sinless perfection argument. I've seen them do it on a YouTube video. Uh, I've seen it. Um, the one guy, I forget what his name, uh, not Yankee Arnold, but uh, one of those guys in that bent just dismantled the uh, sinless perfection today thing. Uh, they, I, and he was a sleazy believer. You know, he did, you know. Just, yeah, sinless perfection. No, no. Paul believed in not sinning. But you read Romans 7, Paul sinned. Okay? See, the minute you start saying that you've got to be sinlessly perfect, then you're equating yourself with God. God was the only one who was ever sinlessly perfect on earth. Okay? All right? So. And see, you Catholics, again, you, because, let's read the quote again. Let's read the quote again. Putting aside all private judgment, we should always be ready to accept this principle. I will believe that the white I see is black if the hierarchical church so defines it. See, the Catholic believes that the math is salvific. They receive Christ by eating him. Okay, in the little stupid cookie. All right, as the Jesuit priest does the woo woody woody uh, abracadabra hocus pocus. Okay, it's witchcraft. It's Satanism. Uh, the masses. It's not. It's nothing. But they point to this like, hey, you gotta eat my. And they come to John chapter six, but they 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 don't like this part of it. John six fifty two on the sixty five. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, "How can this man give us his flesh to eat?" And here's where the Catholic goes. They read that. It's like, see? He, they say uh, at the pay, uh, Passover dinner, which that was in Matthew 26, they say, see? Jesus right there turned the water and the, the, the wine and the blood and the bread into his flesh. With him sitting right there present. <laughs> and they come here. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. And the Catholic, see? You gotta, you gotta eat the cookie. You gotta drink the wine. The Jesuit priest with his witchcraft the raising of the, the perfectly round they do this perfectly round cookie. The rising of the sun. It's Ra. The uh, Egyptian god Ra, Baal worship, sun worship, S-U-N. Okay? It's witchcraft. The mass is witchcraft. It's Baalite. It's Babylonian, period. It's not salvific. But they come to here and say, see, see? These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples when they heard this said this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Nothing. 
And the reason why the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ was sanctified on the cross is because he kept the law perfectly and never sinned. Even though the flesh itself was sinful, he kept the law perfectly. He never had to offer a, a sacrifice or anything. Did he? No. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He wasn't talking literal. Okay? Alright, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, he was just, it was uh, like, not metaphorical, but it was just, it, he wasn't speaking literal. Okay? He wasn't, he wasn't, John 6, verses 53 on to verse 58 does not mean that the Jesuit priest can turn a cookie into flesh and wine into blood and that's... No. No. Because of verse 63, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. Okay? But there are some among you, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except that were given unto him of my Father. And it's available to anyone today. Wear the cross. But see, it's not by coercion. You gotta make the right choice. And Second Peter chapter 1, and see this thing about what Rome does to you guys, you Catholics, with your eating the cookie. Uh, Second Peter 1, 20 on to verse 21. Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Private interpretation. You're supposed to believe that the black is white and the white is black because Rome says so. You poor Catholic. You poor Catholic. 1 Corinthians 11, then we'll be done. 1 Corinthians 11. You have 365 days. Why this week? It's roots in paganism. That's why. And I believe that that man of sin, son of perdition, is going to use these two big holy day holidays. There you go, brother. These big holidays. Well, that's what Christianity has been done. That's what these guys with the December 25th Mass thing do. They try to tell you that Christ's Mass is a holy day. It's a holiday. Holy days are scriptural. Holy days are of man. Holy days are what Paul was talking about. Not the holy days. Okay? All right? Verses 23 and 32, that will be done. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. And we die daily. We're supposed to. Showing the Lord's death till he come. Like I said, scripturally, to commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection, yeah, but it's a daily thing. Why, why are you Christians in this week in this weekend, 
so focused on that. When you should have that in you every day. Huh? Why, why are you relegating it just to these days? Where is it in your daily walk with him? Huh? Where is it? Huh? Dying daily. Where is it? Where is the remembrance of his death, burial, and resurrection in your daily life? Then again, as I know for a fact, the majority of you Christians, you don't really believe in the resurrection anyway, do you? Oh, yes, I do. You know you're supposed to say that. We've, we've talked with you. We've cornered you before. Oh, yes, we have. We have. Yes, we have. And you're lying like a rug. You're, you hoist the colors high, as it were. Shoot yourselves in the foot. You don't believe in the resurrection. But that's what a Christian is supposed to do. Where is, the, where is his daily death in your life? Oh, I'm being too extreme, huh? <laughs> that's your answer, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, God loves you, right? Yeah. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. When you're having communion, if you're living in open sin, contrary to Scripture, and you're going to have Communion in a time of remembrance, actual communion. Eh, no, don't do that. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And how do we judge ourselves? Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. But we are, but when we are judged through the scriptures by the Lord, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Good Friday. Rome would know. Rome would know. I believe that. But uh, good Friday. You know? Why do you not have the remembrance of his death, burial, and resurrection and resurrection in your daily life? Why, why relegate it to this and then go on your merry way? Huh? Why? You know... For all you Christians, and even you, some of you King Game Battle Christians, okay, which is just another weak denomination made by men. Putting aside all private judgment, we should always be ready to accept this principle. I will believe that the white I see is black if the hierarchical church so defines it. Am I against Astarte? Absolutely. 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 Am I against remembering the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord? God forbid. No. I do that every day. How come you don't? 